Welcome, everybody. Hi, I'm having quite the case of the Mondays. I don't know about you guys. Are you guys? Do you guys ever have that, where it's just Monday and you feel the weight of the week on your shoulders and you're dreaming about the fun you had over the weekend? Oh man. Well, hopefully you are having a good day, though. I even though I have a case of the Mondays, I had a pretty good day, and I'm here to bring you guys some entertainment. Uh, the last few weeks, we've started this brand new show called Refueled. For those of you who might be joining for the first time, whether you're on Facebook, on YouTube, or on Twitch, uh, we put out a weekly podcast called Fueled by Deathcast every single week. I got, I got all sorts of graphics. There's the graphic right there. And you can find this wherever podcasts are found. That's including Apple and Spotify and right from the source at deathwishcoffee.com slash deathcasts. And I love coming up with some inspiring and some entertaining conversations with some people that you know and some people sometimes you don't know. Um, and uh, we've now in season four of the show. So we realize we have so many amazing conversations and so many new fans like some of you that we wanted to have a way to kind of get back into some of those episodes and some of our favorite moments, some of my favorite guests, some behind the scenes stuff, and I can watch those along with you. This week, if you guys didn't see at the top there that little graphic, we are going to do the first time ever that Titus Welliver was on the show. Now you might know Titus from a thousand different roles that he's played. He was the man in black on Lost. He was, spoiler, he was um, Jimmy, the, the Irish like gang member on uh, Sons of Anarchy. He obviously is the title character in the show Bosch on Amazon Prime, which will be going into its seventh season next year. And a thousand other things. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Transformers, uh, Gone Girl. I mean, the list goes on and on, and it was amazing to talk with him. He's actually been on the show twice now, but these clips are all from the first time that Titus was ever on the show and i talked to him uh with my co-host at the time dustin we actually got to meet him at his home in los angeles which was really awesome and uh, meet his adorable cat and his dog as well and um he just welcomed him, us into his house to talk about you know his career and what it was like when he started out in acting uh how he got the role of bosch which is pretty incredible and um also uh, how much he loves coffee, and not just any coffee, he loves Death Wish coffee. And I'll let you guys know, too, at the top here, if you are a fan of the Amazon series Bosch, I'll have you know that more often than not, if characters on screen are drinking coffee, they are most likely drinking Death Wish coffee. We provide coffee for the set. And the cast and crew, we love that cast and crew. They are some of the hardest working people in Hollywood. And uh, it's so great to be able to provide them with, you know, the caffeine to keep them going. And uh, so, I mean, we've never been featured on the show. That's the whole other legal thing, obviously. But um, I just know that a lot of times, straight from Titus himself has told me there's been a couple times where Bosch has been on screen you know, drinking out of a nondescript coffee mug or whatever, but he's definitely drinking some Death Wish coffee in there, which is pretty rad. And uh, I do want to take a second to tell you guys, too, if you are new to the podcast, um, like I said, we come out with a new episode every single Thursday, and I this show, Refueled, is going back into the archives and playing some of our favorite clips from from, you know, past episodes, but I didn't realize up until this week that this is a perfect time to sh that I should be able to tell you about the new episode coming out. So if you missed last week, last week was really fun. I had two guests on, Zach Ward and um, uh, James Cullen Bresick, and they are both filmmakers. You probably know Zach Ward. He's an actor as well. He was uh, in A Christmas Story and a bunch of stuff, but they wrote some horror movies together and directed them and produced them and started them, and it was really cool to talk to them about that. So that was last week, but this coming week, just so you guys know, before we jump into Titus, I wanted to show you this coming week. Right there. Right there. I got three for the price of one. Three guests, three episodes, all dropping this Thursday in celebration of a brand new show called Grown Ass Women. That's Gaw TV. And if you're a wrestling fan, you definitely probably recognize these ladies. Lisa Marie Varon, who you might know as Victoria. 
Uh, Mickey James and SoCal Val all have their own episodes all coming out this Thursday, so you definitely don't want to miss that. But without further ado, let's have some fun on this very Monday of Mondays and uh, watch some clips from one of my favorite episodes I got to do, the first time we ever had Titus Welliver, actor, amazing guy on the show. I'll be in those comments too if you have any questions or comments, and I hope you guys enjoy. I call it being in the glove when suddenly it all connects and you find yourself with an involuntary smile on your face. And that to me is the essence of joy yes. in the creation of art. It's inexplicable. Yes. yes. It's just inexplicable. And, and when I get to sit across a table and, and play a scene with another actor who's invested in the same way mm -hmm. and who acts the same way that I do, which is not to service myself entirely, but to service the other actor I sit across from in the process of taking the attention off of myself and putting it on the other person. And that which you see, the performance that occurs because you're giving completely of yourself to this other person, yeah. that resonates. And that's when I get that involuntary smile across yeah. my face. Yeah. Because it's there's a connection there that that I mean, yeah, technically I can explain it to you chapter and verse, but, but the joy of it, the fun of it, is inexplicable. And that's why I love doing it. And we'll never go, you know, people say, oh, well, when I retire, or when you retire, and I say, what you? I, 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 aren't, I'm not gonna retire. No. I mean, what would I do? Well, it's great, typically it's when they go, oh, so when you retire from acting, you'll go back to painting. And I go, no, I, I, I paint and I act. You can do two um, things at once. You know, something, yeah. you know, my painting gets shelved a little bit yeah. when I'm when I'm busy working because there's also the reality that, that I have a family to support yep. mm -hmm. and, and bills to pay like everybody else in the world. And um, there there are jobs that are in the service of art and sometimes in, in, in the you know in the service of commerce and survival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I got the script and I, I read the script and I was kind of, you know, it's, it's the blessing and the curse of a good script when you're an actor because you don't want to want it too much because right. of course it's, it's sometimes it's like the lottery, you know, yeah. you can, you can get all the scratch tickets you want and still come up with Zero. nothing. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but the script was so solid and the character was so kind of clearly defined and I just went, yeah, this is sort of. This is what I've been looking for. And ironically, I had become a little bit, not disenchanted, but I thought, you know, it was time. It came right at a time when I had just had a horrible tragedy in my life. My late wife had, had passed away from cancer, and suddenly I was, you know, a single, a single father. And I was thinking I'd been traveling a lot because prior to that I had been doing The Town and Lost and Sons of Anarchy and The Good Wife all at the same time. Wow. So I was constantly going from one location to the next. Yeah. And my wife was still alive at that point and she was holding the fort down. But I thought, how am I gonna, I have to find something that's local. Yeah. And so in the interim, I had written uh, a television pilot for myself. I just sat down and thought, let me write something that will have some sort of artistic intellectual sustenance that, that, that will sustain me. Right. And of course, that's also a crapshoot. You can write the greatest pilot in the world, and the networks and whoever will just say, yeah, it's great, but it's not for us. Right. And I was just at the point of going out with my manager and starting to shop this property when I got the Bosch script, and I read it, and I went, boy, I'd really like to, I'd love to do this. So through a series of mishaps, um, every time I was trying to make a meeting with Michael Connolly and the producers for, for the role, um, I, I lost my cell phone and something else happened and I was shooting Transformers mm -hmm. Age of Extinction and that was a lot of location stuff. I was in Chicago, I was in um, Michigan and then in Hong Kong and all over the place and so I don't know, it seemed like a couple months passed and I got a call from my manager. I was back in LA for a hot minute and he said, hey, uh, you're going to meet with Connolly on Tuesday and I said, you know, oh, well, I thought that boat sailed. Wasn't that months ago? And he said, no, they can't, 
they can't find Bosch. They've they've read everyone and considered everyone they want, but Connolly will not go forward until they find the guy that suits him. Yeah. And you know, lucky for me, I went in and met with Michael and did my thing. And as he tells the story, I I left and and Mike Connolly turned to the producers and said, that was Harry Bosch, and that was that. The fuel for all of this, of course, alas, is a good cup of Death Wish coffee. There it is. In the morning. There it is. Because not only, <laughs> not only does it have the highest caffeine Do tell. count <laughs> on the planet, and it's organic, and it's clean, it doesn't, since, since people are wont to use the word fake, it's not fake coffee. Yeah. It's real coffee that hasn't been perverted by, by pesticides and, and flavors and, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I think now more than ever, people need to be, <laughs> really need to be alert. Yeah. They need to be awake. Yeah. And who better than Death Wish Coffee? To, to to keep us all on the righteous pathway, right? I love For, it. I love it. Well, know, how many how many cups of coffee you do consume in a day? Just, you see, now that. you put me. You're compromising me because if I if I say no, because well, there's, seven, no wrong, there's no then wrong people answer. go. He's clearly got a problem with coffee. <laughs> and if I say well, one, they go well, maybe that coffee's not so great. No, I, you know, the the thing about that which which death wish coffee does, which is what I just said. It's I I don't like putting. Bad stuff, and it doesn't mean that I that that I that I won't go out and eat ice cream, right? right? Yeah. That, well, it, yeah. you know, uh, you know, or on the on the odd occasion have an annual In and Out burger with animal fries or something. Mm. It was amazing, by the way. It was our first experience Which, in In and Out, it was and amazing. it ain't bad. It ain't, <laughs> yeah, it's, it it's, it's a not lot bad. of flavor. I didn't know where it was coming from. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, that's the thing. Nobody knows <laughs> where, know where it's coming from. It, it, could, it might be yoga mats and athletic socks, but, <laughs> that's okay with but me, in man. the moment, it tastes good. Yeah. But you know, when you the, the it's interesting, and I think for me, it's sort of it, it's it's reinventing the wheel to a certain degree. And what 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 Deathwish has done is it's kind of gone back to the recipe of it ain't broke, so there's no need to fix it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so when you create a product, particularly now because people are tired of putting bad shit in their bodies and totally. or having, you know, we all have that's an option, right? If yeah. you if you wanna. Drink Starbucks, and you know sometimes you have to do that in a pinch. <laughs> um, I personally, the first time I had Death Wish coffee, um, and we thank Andy Smith for that because yes. he's the one that that got me, turned me on to you guys. Um, it's it, it's kind of like, you know, when you drink something and it's good, and you go. This is really, really good, and it's good for you. You kind of go, well, that, that's sort of a no-brainer right. to me. Yeah. And so, my thing is that when I find something that's great, um, you know, I should walk around like like the the race car drivers. You know, they have all the, the endorsement <laughs> patches on, on there. Because I, I, I we am. We can send I, you some patches. No, I, I am. Well, you better. I, I, I mean, I I'm, I kind of become like you know a stock car racer. Yeah. Because I'm always flying the flag. If I'm not wearing a Death Wish coffee shirt, I got my coffee and comics and my and my. Uh, my my favorite Death Wish shirt, of course, is is my um, spin on the on the Masters of Reality. Yes, because um, I'm a huge Sabbath fan, so that was that was the one I had to have. Oh yeah. But the first time I wore my Death Wish shirt out in public, somebody thought it was a joke. They just thought they always do. Oh, that's that's kind of a that's kind of a funny yeah because everyone we're such a coffee culture now yeah mm -hmm. and and somebody said oh that's a really funny shirt where'd you get it I said oh from well from Death Wish Coffee you don't know about Death Wish Coffee they didn't know and then of course they they were probably sorry that they they asked me because then I I, I had to, I went on my whole thing <laughs> yeah about the virtues of Death Wish Coffee yeah but that to me is. You know, we live in the world of information, um, and you have to represent. You have to represent properly. And everybody who I turn on to Death Wish Coffee, 
you know, it's the same thing as, you know, I'm sure, you know, the first time I turned my kids on to Hendrix, I, re I remember my son saying, I really like Jimi Hendrix. And I went, yeah, because it's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the truth. It's the truth. Well, we're really happy that you enjoy it and, and in turn have turned other people onto it, like everybody, uh, you know, who's working on the incredible show, Bosch, and all that. And um, we can't. Well, yeah, I gotta, I gotta interrupt you there and just say it. it, it Death Wish is the coffee of Bosch, <laughs> which is incredible to hear. And you know, My Amazon, really Amazon, Amazon sells a shitload yes. of Death Wish products. Yes. Number one selling coffee on Amazon. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm, it, I, I hate the word no-brainer, but it's but sort of it, it's sense, sort of a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Super fun reliving that. I wanted to let you guys know that not only was uh, Titus so welcoming to us, putting, giving, letting us come into his ha home and interview him for that, and talk about Death Wish. We actually, he actually brought Dustin and I uh, a couple days later on set. And I've never been on a TV set or a movie set or anything like that before. And that was absolutely incredible. We got to meet some of his co-stars. We got to meet the director and a lot of like the grips and the crew. And it was awesome because he wasn't kidding. Like we walked in, obviously Dustin and I both had on like Death Wish hats and Death Wish shirts, you know, and anything. And people were coming up to us and like shaking our hand and being like, oh my gosh, you guys, the Death Wish guys, like we love your coffee. So it's really cool to hear stories like that. And I hope that was a little enter entertaining for you guys as well. I definitely recommend if you are a fan of Titus, go on over, check out that full episode. You can find it at deathwishcoffee.com slash Titus. You can also find it on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. And you can find all of our podcasts at deathwishcoffee.com slash deathcasts, including the second time that Titus was on. If you type in deathwishcoffee.com slash Titus2, you'll find that second one. I got him back on recently, a uh, handful of weeks ago, right before season six of Bosch premiered. So we got to talk about the new season. We got to talk about working with the dog Coltrane. I got to ask him finally some questions about Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I'm a big fan of. So that was a lot of fun. And we just nerded out about a lot of stuff. Um, it was it was really, really a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. One more time, as I close out some of these things here, I do want to mention uh, this week, you guys are getting three episodes for the price of one, which the price is free, so you get them all the time. Anyways, please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Music, iHeartRadio, wherever it is, find Fuel by Deathcast, hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to get notified when new stuff comes out, including this week with three episodes three episodes from grown-ass women that's lisa marie socal val and mickey james they'll all be out on this thursday and each of those ladies has an incredible career that kind of surrounds professional wrestling but now they have all come together to create this really fun and really interesting youtube show called grown-ass women g-a-w-t-v and they're fueled by Deathwish coffee so we love those ladies and it was really cool to sit down and talk with them. So if you're fans of wrestling, you don't want to miss those three episodes coming out this Thursday. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the Monday, wherever you're watching from. And uh, as always, stay caffeinated, keep your mugs up, and I'll talk to you soon.